Welcome back to War Always Changes, aka WAC. Have you ever dreamed of sending nuclear devices to defenseless cities from hundreds of miles away and burning them in a relentless hellfire of a 10 megaton blast? Me either. But regardless of that, there is the option of using a variety of missiles in Conflict of Nations World War III. From MOABs to chemical bombs up to the most modern ICBMs. They are incredibly versatile and oh so useful. But without proper scouting of the enemy and know-how on how to use them, then you may just end up wasting huge amounts of resources. In Khan, we have three types of missiles with three types of warheads. For missiles, we have cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and intercontinental ballistic missiles. For warheads, we have conventional explosive, chemical, and nuclear. There are a variety of uses for all of these, and there is a total of seven different combinations. Starting with missile types, we'll look at cruise missiles. They can target and track ground and naval stacks, as well as hit cities and provinces. Launching from most ships, certain aircraft, and their specific ground launcher. And while they are the most versatile and the cheapest, they do the least amount of damage and have the smallest splash radius, as well as travel the slowest, have very little HP and range. Ballistic missiles are the best weapon against cities and their defending armies. As with ICBMs, they can only hit province centers and cities. They have a medium splash radius and have the ability to ignore garrisoned army defenses, even from bunkers. Think of them as bunker busters that can also detonate above ground. These can only be launched from their ground launchers or ballistic missile submarines, for the most part. So they take a a bit of planning to use, since they cannot reach around the planet like ICBMs. ICBMs are an immensely powerful weapon system to have at the ready, but are very expensive and time-consuming to make. They are mainly used to deter other enemies from attacking you, and are a great threat if your enemy has no counter to them. They can only equip nuclear warheads, and can only be launched from ICBM launchers. So if you're going to use them, I recommend having two or more level 5 secret weapon labs so that you can fire enough missiles at once to destroy any nation in one attack, as well as researching the missile to the max so that your range is not limited. Another note is that you will need to scout out an enemy's home nation before pressing the nuclear button, as if you lose two or more missiles to theater defense systems, you will be set back a considerable amount compared to if you lost a couple of cruise missiles or ballistic missiles. Use spies or stealth UAVs to accomplish this. If we take a look at the different warhead types, we can see that it is good to have stock of all three types. Conventional warheads are great in just about any scenario and are the cheapest to make. They work amazingly against armor and grounded aircraft. Chemical warheads excel at taking out soft targets but are not great against much else. Both chemical and nuclear warheads damage friendly units. Both of these warhead types will also contaminate a city, making production impossible until it is decontaminated. This is amazing for putting a pause on a foe's war efforts and possibly even making them rage quit. Lastly, nuclear warheads will be the best in every way except for higher cost and increased collateral damage. Using these missiles, as stated before, can be done from many platforms depending on the missiles. All missiles have their own specific ground-based launch platform, and they are all slow and practically defenseless against anything. One huge bonus they have, however, is that they all have stealth from the get-go. The best way to position these things in your homeland is to have them as single units scattered across your provinces. Do not have them at cities or province centers. Have them along a path that will likely not be traveled, like a road leading to a lake or river. That way, if an enemy takes some of your provinces, or even your entire nation, you can still have missile launchers to perform a counter-strike or to simply spite your enemy. I know this may be giving you information overload, but bear with me as I will show you an Excel document with all of the unit stats and comparisons. In the first portion, we can see the comparisons for all of the base missile stats. Feel free to screenshot this and share it. 
Quickly looking at this, you can get a general idea of the power and cost of each missile type with the different warheads. As I stated in my National Guard vs. Infantry video, the stats shown here may be different in the future, as the developers do a pretty good job of keeping this game updated. Moving on, we can look at the stats of the max level missiles with each warhead type, and the numbers look a whole lot more exciting here. Conventional cruise missiles are a cost-effective way to take out armor. Chemical cruise missiles are a cheaper way than nuclear to take out soft targets. Nuclear cruise missiles are the best for crews overall and can be a relatively cheap way to temporarily disable cities due to the resulting contamination. Conventional ballistic missiles are pretty great, and the chemical ones are good for attacking defending armies, and with the splash radius, is nice for when they are fleeing or heading to a location. Nuclear ballistic missiles are simply amazing. They are 67% cheaper than ICBMs and only do 27% less damage, as well as ignore bunkers. The ICBMs are just a great F you, and if you are rich in resources and scouting tech are not a bad way to go. For the last portion of our stat breakdown segment of the video, we can take a look at the launchers for these missiles. The cost of each one is directly proportional with the power of the missiles they fire. As stated before, they are all stealth units, and the only difference between the base level and the max level units is that the fully researched units can be airlifted. Airlifting the cruise missile launchers can be very useful for a forward operating base or annexed city, and for ballistic missile launchers, to be within attacking range of distant countries. Airlifting ICBM launchers is only really worth it to have a quicker travel time for the nuke. Now that we have a general idea of what these missiles do and what their stats are, we can decide which ones are worth it. Cruise missiles are always worth it, unless you anticipate all of your enemies having SAMs and frigates at all times. Ballistic missiles are the best ordnance delivery method in my opinion, and are great if you are in a densely packed part of the world and or are planning on launching them from sea via subs. A couple of things to note, however, is that they won't be as durable as ICBMs and are by no means cheap. ICBMs are the big chungus, the single most powerful researchable item in the game. Are they worth it? No. In the vast majority of situations, they are absolutely not worth it. Researching max level ICBMs alone costs over 12,000 supplies and almost 14,000 science and takes about 7 in-game days. For reference, you could basically get level 6 fighters for the same amount of time and resources. It's always fun to try out ICBMs, but by the time they are researched and you have enough nuclear warheads and launchers to be useful, the game is typically already done or wrapping up. Now that I've given you all you need to know on researching missiles, hopefully now you have an idea as to if they are worth it in your current and future games of Khan. But how do you counter missiles and nukes, you may be asking? Well, the answer is really quite simple. The one thing you have to do is...